Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. This is uh, Victor Jiang. Uh, I'm the um, medical education consultant uh, of the uh, Overseas Medical Mentorship Program. Today we would like to uh, talk about the medical terminology. And I'm sure that you can, uh, you can see the uh, shared screen. I'm uh, now making use of the uh, uh, PDF uh, textbook in the name of Medical Terminology and Illustrated Guide. Uh, you know the author is Barbara Jason Cohen. This is a fourth edition, but actually, as I know that there is some um, uh, seventh edition or even eighth edition of this kind of book. But as we know that the medical terminology is very basic for us um, medical students to learn uh, <clears throat> the medical expertise. <clears throat> uh, I think that um, even though you do not have any background in medicine, but uh, I'm, I'm sure that you heard it, uh, some, uh, <clears throat> you know, mentioned that there's a very difficult, complicated, complex in, in about the medical terminology. But today we would like to uh, um, talk about her how we can learn the medical terminology well. <clears throat> Since, you know, uh, why we would like to uh, uh, learn the medical terminology, I think uh, maybe you've got the dream to be a, a doctor in the future, or you want to be a nurse to take care of the patients. But I think even though you'll be, a, uh, you know, a nurses, uh, in, in, in no matter where you are, but I think that it's better for you to know uh, a little bit about the medical terminology, uh, and then you will uh, it will be better for you to work with uh, the doctors, right? What about doctors? So uh, I think that uh, every career career in healthcare uh, begins with learning the vast and challenging language of medical terminology. So without adequate learning and uh, teaching uh, resources. Uh, it is can be an overwhelming challenge for students and faculty. So we're uh, making use of this uh, electronic form of book, Medical Terminology, an illustrated guide. Uh, this will meet the challenge with uh, a clear organizational scheme. And this is a full color illustration with a strong clinical focus, a wide array of effective uh, pedagogical features, a variety of uh, activities and useful ancillaries to make teaching and learning more effective. So because of the uh, content in this book is uh, so accessible uh, and logical organized, so uh, the texts in this book can be used as part of a uh, classroom, you know, instructions for independent learning or for distance learning as well. Now we are just making use of this uh, medical terminology, an illustrated guide for students who would like uh, to learn medicine. I'm not sure that uh, uh, who you are, but I think uh, you gotta uh, wear the shoes as I am wearing, uh, be fascinated with uh, medicine, or you want to learn medicine uh, in the future. But medical terminology is really a very good key for you to step into the holy uh, whole of the medicine. So I uh, uh, suggest you to attach great importance to this uh, electronic, uh, you know, online charge-free uh, medical terminology class for everybody all around the world. Uh, if you really like medicine, if you want to, uh, you know, uh, get into the medical field, very uh, holy field, and you want to save our lives in the future, I think that this class will be very helpful for you. So let's just, uh, uh, you know, talk about the contents and what kind of, uh, you know, content in a brief way, we will learn. Today, we uh, we'll talk about the first part or the first chapter 
uh, concepts of medical terminology, and it is in the first part introduction to medical terminology. But in the first part, we can see that there is some second chapter suffixes, uh, chapter three prefixes, chapter four cells, tissues, organs, and uh, chapter five body structure. <clears throat> so I think that um, since we are talking about medical uh, terminology, they cannot uh, not prevent us from the learning that real uh, anatomy or body structure or some like uh, basic biology, <clears throat> like a cellular biology, molecular biology, in that kind of sense. So we have, you know, <clears throat> uh, to talk about something other than words. We talk about it medicine uh, because it is, you know, about medicine, right? So. As to the part two, we can see the disease and treatment. In this part, we can see the chapter six, disease. <clears throat> chapter seven, diagnosis and treatment surgery. Chapter eight, drugs. Yeah, that concludes, wraps up the uh, second part. And let's go to the part three, body systems. Uh, chapter nine, talk about our circulation, the cardiovascular and lymphatic systems. Chapter 10, blood and immunity. Chapter 11, respiration. Uh, chapter 12, digestion. Chapter 13, the urinary system. <clears throat> chapter 14, the male reproductive system. Yes, yeah, certainly uh, 15. Chapter 15, the female reproductive system, pregnancy and birth. Uh, Chapter 16, the endocrine system. Chapter 17, the nervous system and the behavioral disorders. Uh, behavioral uh, science is about uh, you know, psychology or psychiatry, that kind of thing, because psychiatry is uh, the science about the abnormal uh, behavior. But the psychology, as we know, it's uh, uh, studying about the normal, uh, behavior, but uh, it's uh, a little bit um, away from the you know regular track of our behavior, right? Um, eighteen, chapter eighteen, the senses. Uh, chapter nineteen, the skeleton. Chapter twenty, muscular system. I think that this uh, you know, um, chapter nineteen and chapter twenty are almost a. Uh, about uh, uh, like uh, anatomy and uh, you know chapter twenty one skin yeah uh, I think it's a little bit um uh, associated with uh, clinical uh, medicine I think anyway so that's almost the uh, twenty one chapters uh, of the contents where we'll uh, you know from the beginning to the end we'll go through all the twenty one chapters. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, ask you, some of you, if you, since you have joined me about um, this kind of uh, uh, medical terminology online class, uh, do you have any question? Are, are you worrying about uh, how can you learn medicine well or medical terminology, terminology well? If you have any question, you just uh, feel free to talk to me, okay? And I uh, can uh, send me a short message or you know by the attention meeting or verbal meeting and then send anything to me uh, during the process you're learning with me <clears throat> well thank you let's go to uh the uh, part one okay just make use of this uh, pdf file electronic form okay uh part one introduction to medical terminology uh we have, uh, you know, reviewed the uh, chapter 21 chapters, but in, in this part, there's five chapters, chapter one through chapter five. Part one presented the basics of medical terminology and the body structure. And chapter six to through eight, part two, deal with the disease and treatment. This beginning of chapters from the basis uh, for the chapters on the individual body system, part three. Anyway, so <clears throat> let's just, uh, from the chapter one, talk about our concepts of medical terminology. 
uh, I'm, I think that uh, some of uh, you will heard that uh, generally speaking, the words, any words, if if it's if such kind of words is a you know common uh, of the words, we can see that the words generally uh, has three parts: prefix, root, and the suffix. So if we just put uh, the three of uh, parts of the word together, it will <coughs> form a very long um, words. But if you don't have the medical terminology uh, education or training, and you will you will think that oh my God, we're so long words that's so complicated, and they cannot figure it out. But actually, if if you have this kind of uh, medical terminology education, you find that actually that's not that kind of difficult, right? Because there's a rule behind the conversation of the uh, words prefix root and uh, suffix so generally what is root the root of the word uh, refers to it is the basis uh, basic component of the word and then it generally uh, will tell you uh, what kind of uh, the, the total the, uh, the three parts words will be like uh, for example, we have uh, <clears throat> presented here. The words are from the uh, from roots, prefix, and suffix. But I can see that these words, these words, you know, the words is not here in 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 the uh, in a shade. I can see. Uh, let me make it in in a large. Okay. Now, here, these words. I'm not sure that you can read it. Uh, gastro duodenostomy gastroduodenostomy or in reading in this way so gastro is a uh, in this word it's kind of a prefix okay it's kind of prefix because uh, gastric means of stomach okay of stomach and here Diodino mean you know this is duodenum here. You can see that duodenum is the lower part that can connect to the upper part of uh, uh, the upper of the duodenum is the stomach, right? But as we know that there are three parts of the stomach, the cardiac, uh, the upper part of uh, the stomach connecting to the uh, esophagus or uh, meal tube, right? We, because we just eat food every day, eat the food from the mouth to the esophagus, uh, and then from the esophagus to the stomach, right? So, and then you can see that this is the body of the stomach, but the end of the at the end of the stomach there is a called a pylori. Uh, I'm sure that you know uh, some. Uh, you know, bar bacteria called HPV, uh, human pylori, uh, HP, or yeah, not not HP, but HP, HP, yeah, human pylori bacteria. That's kind of a, a bacteria that can cause the gastritis or duodenitis, uh, which you can feel painful uh, before or after. And generally, uh, it is uh, you know before uh, your meal. Uh, because you know the human pylori, the bacteria, and then it's most of the person after treating uh, treated with uh, some kind of bacteria, uh, antibiotic, uh, and then this kind of disease to some extent will be uh, relieved, and then even in the end you can recover uh, comprehensively. So you can see that the uh, the pylori, the end of the stomach, connecting to the duodenum. You know, the duodenum in Chinese, 十二指肠, duodenum, that is the uh, part of the small intestine or the upper part of, the most upper part of the uh, small intestine connecting to the pylori, right? The, and pylori is the lower part of the stomach. So you can see that that is the you know, explanation of the duodenum, right? So can, we can see here, gastro duodenum. Duod yeah, gastro means stomach. 
do a DNAME and I, I will give the you know illustration part of that's the part of the upper part of the small intestine. And stomach uh, or ostomy. Ostomy is you can see that here, that's the illustration about if some person unfortunately got the, like uh, stomach cancer in the lower part of uh, the stomach, that's called uh, um, pylori, right? And then the surgeon uh, think that it's necessary to, uh, to cut the pylori uh, away from the stomach. And then uh, this is called uh, ostomy. Ostomy means in a cut part of the organ uh, by the surgery uh, from the body. So I think that if this the low pylori has been cut away from uh, in the stomach and then the left two parts of the stomach and the duodenum should be connected, right? Connected each other uh, because you're, you know, after the surgery, you got to eat something uh, for surviving. And uh, these two parts connected. So then the food after, you know, uh, digested in the stomach and it should be, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, get, in, get into the duodenum for further digestion. As we know, the small intestine is the uh, most important part of uh, our nutrition absorption, right? So here, the two parts of uh, you know stomach and the duodenum connected or sutured uh, with each other, and then this process is called uh, here anastomosis. Anastomosis. See here, duodenal anastomosis. Okay, anastomosis. Uh, please, uh, be not. Please be clear that OSIS is a kind of a, in a uh, the end of the word, which means as a kind of a circumstance. Uh, it's a noun, and it is uh, attribute form is uh, otic. OSIS, uh, the corresponding uh, adjective OIS, OSIS is OTIC, otic. So here, Anastomosis, the adjective form of anastomosis should be anastomotic. Okay, adjective form anastomotic uh, of the anastomosis. So here, duodenum anastomosis means the duodenum connected with the lower part of the stomach after the pylori part of the stomach has been cut away. So the cutting procedure is called gastroduodenostomy. So you can see that how many uh, letters in this, you know, words, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, totally. The 18 ha uh, letters in this component words gastro denostomy. But actually, this word can be uh, separated into three parts, right? Gastro means stomach, duodenum is duodenal, is uh, the you know, a root of a duodenum, uh, and ostomy. Ostomy mean I, I told you that ostomy means cutting. Okay, means the surgery and the cutting the organ away from its original place, right? So you can see that even though uh, superficially or the first beginning, the word is a little bit um, challenging, difficult, but after our uh, illustration, we can see that it's not that kind of difficult, right? Not that kind of difficult. There's a way out, right? There's a way out. Okay. So let's turn to this page. Oh, that is the females, um, the kidney, ureter, bladder, urethra. Ah, uh, that's um, you know, urinary system.
but you can see that uh, in this figure one to two, you can see the Greek root nephro, N E P H R, here, and the Latin words R E N, here, are used to refer to kidney, an organ of the urinary system. So, a in a uh, urinary system, if there is uh, some disease called a nephritis, uh, nephritis. Uh, if you have no, uh, that nephro means um, means kidney, right? Makes it means kidney. If I would like uh, share with you here, uh, I would like, uh, for example, uh, N E P H R I nephritis. Uh, as we know, N E P H R means mean, means uh, kidney, right? K I D N kidney. And as I as I'm I'm telling you that I T I S means a kind of a inflammation. It's kind of inflammation. So you can see that nephritis means the inflammation of kidney, right? Oh yeah, nephritis means the inflammation of kidney. So easy. So, but no matter what, you gotta uh, bear in mind that the nephro is the Greek root, okay? Greek root. And also here, ren. You can see the ren uh, is is used to refer to kidney. Uh, renal, like uh, for example, here I would I, I would write here. R E N renal. Renal means of kidney. Of kidney. So so you can see that um, it's better for us to remember uh, the the basic uh, root, Greek root and Latin word root such as nephro uh, and and ren I -E N uh, means refer to the kidney, right? So you can see that um, in this way, if we come across some uh, diseases like uh, nephritis, nef nephritis means the inflammation, inflammation of the kidney, or renal disease means the disease is about uh, kidney. So it will be easier for us to, to read some, you know, so-called medical or academic uh, uh, papers, right? Okay. Anyway. So, look and see, uh, I just uh, um, wipe it out because it will follow us. It will, it, will, it will follow with us. I just, um, yeah, delete. Okay. Well, okay, and see, um, we can read the textbook. This, uh, the simple word A-R-N can be used as the root to illustrate. If we uh, add the suffix E-R, uh, to form learner, we have one who learns. If we add the prefix re to to form relearn, we have to learn again. So in in our plan English, because we're talking about the medical English, very professional this kind of medical terminology. But other than this uh, very professional uh, English, uh, I'm sure that you have learned some you know ordinary uh, plan English. Yeah. And then you you know that prefix, suffix, and even root, just like we mentioned, learn learn something to study something, and uh, can you add a suffix er means the person learn something, right? Or re as a prefix means learn again, right? So in the same way, and in the medical terminology, we also can uh to to learn much more uh, new uh, medical terminologies in this way, right? Uh, you see that in this uh, textbook, we, we can know that the palmer, you see here, here, palmer, yeah, P U M O, palmer, uh, meaning lung, okay, lung, because use the root palm, it gives us the root P U L M. So, lung as the uh, the general very ordinary English or plain English, but Palmer is a Latin word. Latin word means lung, right? It's like uh, 
pulmonary disease. Uh, let's see if I write I write down here. Here pulmonary. Okay, if I were like uh, right here, uh, pulmonary disease means the disease or lung disease, right? Lung disease. So because uh, English is um yeah. Even though, as we know, the English, French, uh, German, and Spanish, even uh, some part of the Italian, Italian are actually originated from Latin words. But actually, the, there's some Latin words are not used uh, in our daily communication <clears throat> in English. So we have to learn this kind of uh, you know Latin words in medical field. Uh, as I know that in um, uh, like botany or phytology or science about uh, the plant. There's a lot of uh, words also in a Latin form, uh, especially when you uh, want to uh, study for your PhD degree or master degree, uh, doctor degree, and then you have to be familiar with uh, this kind of Latin words, right? Okay, medicine, yeah, certainly. Medicine, I think it's uh, uh, most uh, in a typical field that we have to learn the Latin words, right? Latin words. Okay. So we act, now we have come to uh, the two parts. One is um, the prefix, root, and, pre uh, and suffix. And also, also there's a lot of uh, Latin words and the Greek words uh, to uh, compose or form our the medical terminology. No matter what, we have to remember this kind of, uh, you know, Greek and Latin uh, root, and it will be, uh, you know, easier for us to know. And then just we make some kind of combinations, prefix and suffix, and then it will, this kind of medical terminology or vocabulary will be expanded uh, easily, I think, easily. Okay. So, um, I, I think that up to now, you have, maybe have some kind of, uh, you know, you know, like a rough sense that, oh, uh, medical terminology, yes, uh, it's kind of uh, difficult uh, a little bit, but uh, not that kind of big difficult. If we can master the rules and uh, have some kind of Greek and Latin root in our mind, and it will be easier, right? Okay. So according to this uh, electronic form, we can see the combining form, uh, you see, um, I say the root and O and the suffix. Uh, for example, uh, here, have a look, this words, neurology. Uh, as we know that O-L-O-G-Y as the suffix meaning the study of uh, some, you know, subject, some discipline, right? But as we know, nerve, N-E-U-R, uh, is actually refers to the nerve, N E R V nerve. So nerve, N E U R plus O, and then uh, with uh, the L O G Y at the end of the word, totally it read neurology. So neurology is the study about the nerve system, right? Nerve system. So how we can uh, make of the combining form. Certainly, we got to know the roots, right? Roots shown in a combining vowel are called a combining form, okay? Uh, a root with a combining vowel is often called a combining form. Uh, there's a root and there's a combining vowel, O, and then forming a combining form. Uh, as I have told you that I-T-I-S here, means a uh, kind of uh, inflammation here. And you see that neuritis, neo nerve means, uh, N-E-U-R means nerve. Nerve means a, a kind of, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> that can uh, you know, send a signal from the brain to the rest of the body. Uh, for example, you have uh, some idea and then you want to extend your hand, arm, and then this kind of signal can be sent from the brain, the central nervous system, and then to uh, another central system, surface, central surface uh, nervous system is called a spinal cord, 
and then there's a um, um, you know sensory root of uh, uh, the nerve spinal cord or send the this kind of information to your uh, hand or to your arm and then your and the arm can you know have this kind of signals uh, via the neurotransmitter uh, and then your nerve ending in, in the, you know hand can you know no, oh yeah, the brain send a signal. I gotta extend or um, your your arm, and this kind of uh, you know moment will happen, right? So neuritis is means inflammation of a nerve. I can imagine that if there's some nerve, I got the inflammation, and in the end, uh, this kind of uh, uh, information cannot be uh, sent in a proper way. Right, if some person got a neuritis in his hand, uh, and I think that his or her uh, moment cannot be that kind of uh, precise or accurate, right? Okay, anyway, so we, we just know that the the uh, medical terminology, uh, generally, we can know the root, prefix, suffix, and this kind of uh, combining form. And then we uh, got to know there are some, uh, you know, frequently uh, made some kind of uh, prefix such as ITIS, right? Uh, means information. Yeah. O L O G Y, ology means a kind of study or kind of science and discipline, right? So it's very, uh, you know, uh, um, I think easy, okay? Very easy. So here in this in, in, in this screen can see that's this uh, some word der derivation. Uh, uh, yes, I mentioned that some part of the uh, you know medical terminologies actually come from Greek or Latin, right? Because as we know that in in uh, um, Western words, uh, the Greek and the Latin uh, Italy are part of the. Uh, in a region, regional places for the you know upcoming science technology, including uh, philosophy, right? Uh, reasoning, logic, argumentation, that kind of uh, uh, very splendid uh, culture and knowledge, wisdom. I think that um, in the Western words, most person would like to uh, talk about her Greece, and if they want to. Uh, pursue the origin of their science and, and knowledge. You know. Yeah, Greece is a great country, even though in, in this country now is not that kind of uh, prominent in uh, Europe. But it, but their history is very splendid, right? Okay. So <clears throat> in this, we can see that that here the coccyx, the tail end of the spine, is named uh, for the Kakudo, uh, uh, kaku here, uh, here is coccyx, the, the tail end of the spine, uh, is named for the kuko because it was uh, thought to resemble the kuko's bill. Uh, let's go into the figure one, two, three. Here, this is figure one, two, three. Yeah, you can see that that's almost the spine from the top. Uh, atlas to the end of the coccyx. See here, coccyx of the spine looks like the bill of a uh, uh, cuckoo. Uh, reprinted with the permission from a uh, QMBJ, um, Master Human Body and Health Disease, Ninth Edition, Philadelphia, and then Living Code William, 2000. And you can see that it, it is um, very interesting that in this figure, Right, this uh, another uh, words uh, we are, I think that we're not familiar with. Here, sacrum, okay, and on the above the coccyx, and also if you can uh, touch your buttocks, um, or actually inside your buttocks, it is uh, sacrum. And because um, we are not, this class is not about anatomy, but actually. Uh, if we were in anatomy, can find that the 
generally speaking, if we just look uh, from the back of our body, you can see that the sacrum and our coccyx actually from in one uh, part of uh, like a, a triangle or shape of the bone um, that's uh, composed of our the hip and, and the back of our you know, spine. And in the upper of the sacrum, you can see the foramen for spinal nerve. Uh, and you can see that a spinous process and the body of the vertebra and the in the vertebra uh, disc and the transverse process and the axis and the atlas. Well, I think that's uh, because the first class uh, about the medical terminology, there's no need for you to master so uh, uh, many words about the anatomy. Don't worry, uh, you're not required to remember this kind of uh, uh, anatomy words, but I think uh, after you have learned uh, the anatomy or with the we are, you know, further learning, you can see that these words will be naturally implanted in your brain and that you find that, oh, it's not that kind of uh, difficult. Okay. So next we would like to talk, talk about our pronunciation. Okay. Uh, generally, uh, the pronunciation will follow uh, the the ordinary you know, plain English pronunciation rule, since we know that there's a, a consonant uh, and there's some kind of vowels. And and then uh, in my idea, I think that we just uh, produ uh, pronounce the, uh, um, the medical words in an ordinary way. Uh, uh, you can see the phonetic pronunciation are provided in the text as of every opportunity. Even in the answer case, take uh, advantage of these aids. Repeat the words uh, aloud as you learn to recognize it in the print. Yeah, I do think that um, to read a lot, I repeat whatever learned, uh, no matter Chinese, English, or Japanese, German, French, to repeat. I think it's the uh, I think it's best way to learn any language well including the medical terminology. You got to repeat uh, and speak out. And in the end, you find that it's a part of you. And then you can it's, you feel not that, that kind of awkward when you firstly come uh, to learn it. And second time, third time, you find that this kind of medical terminology would be so easy, right? So you got to be aware that words, parts can maybe change in pronunciation when they are combined with uh, in a different ways. So so uh, we'd like to see that following pronunciation guide lines apply throughout the textbook. Um, I can see uh, a vowel, A-E-I-O-U, right? There's, there are five vowels. I get a short pronunciation. If it has no pronunciation, mark over it, such as A as in hat, E as in mate, I as in bin, O as in sun, uh, U as in run. Okay, uh, I think this it's uh, I think it's very easy, right? I we are not talk about it uh, further. I think it's very easy. Okay. Okay. Um, I see here it's a box one to one pronunciations. When pronunciations are included in that text, it is uh, sometimes difficult to know which pronunciation of the term to use. So pronunciation may vary from country to country, even in different regions of the same country. Certainly, there's some you know local accent, but don't worry. Generally speaking, uh, even there's some difference uh, in the pronunciation between uh, like uh, German or uh, in U United States, uh, you know, American English or British uh, accent English. But I think that they can understand each other because this kind of pronunciation in my eyes is not kind of big deal, right? So here the word gynecology is usually pronounced uh, with a hard G in the United States. Uh, so in, in America, this word called gynecology. But in the United Kingdom, it is called gynecology. In many areas, a soft G is used. Here, soft G means 
gynecology. World, uh, it pertaining to the Sari brand and the largest part of the brand, right? This, uh, our brand uh, actually uh, has two, uh, generally speaking, two parts, Sari, Sari brand, the big brand, or Sari Bellum, the small brand, right? Briefly. But actually, actually there's a stem, uh, there's some uh, hippocampus, hypothalamus, there's many parts of the and components of the brain. But generally, we can see cerebrum and cerebellum. Here, cerebellum have many accents in, in the different syllables. So here, the adjective is usually pronounced with the accent uh, uh, cerebral, okay? Cerebral is the uh, actually form of cerebrum, right? But in the cerebrum and the cerebrospinal, here, cerebrospinal, cerebra. I, I, well, I have talked about a cerebra here. Cerebra means of cerebrum, uh, right? But the spinal, uh, spinal cord, um, that is part of the central so nervous system. Uh, here we can see that actually that is the um, you know, out shape of the um, spinal cord in a bone shape or, you know, but it actually uh, there's a spinal cord running through from the top of uh, the bottom of the spinal. Uh, this is spine, right? Spinal cord is part of the central nervous system. And, and the name first of the smaller intestine, duodenum. Yeah, we have talked about the duodenum, right? Duodenum is often pronounced uh, duodenum. Also the pronunciation duodenum is also acceptable. Uh, duodenum, duodenum, well, I think that's that kind of a, uh, you know, difference. So when extreme and some alternate pronunciation can sound like a foreign language, the word we pronounce as skeletal is pronounced in uh, some other English speaking countries as uh, skelly, skeletal. Anyway, I think that's some um, uh, difference uh, about the uh, strengthened accent, strengthened uh, vowel. Uh, it depends uh, if you are uh, communicate with uh, the counterpart often and you find that this kind of uh, pronunciation difference is not that kind of uh, difference. Okay, uh, you, you should not attach very importance to the difference, I think. So here are uh, the softer and hard C and G. You can see a uh, soft C uh, racer, I see a racer been written as the R A C eraser and hard C and the C A N D Y candy, right? So as as in a soft C we read the S racer, but in a hard C read as candy, right? Uh, written as candy, right? A soft G uh, as in a page, in a written page. When a hard G we got uh, as in grow. Uh, written is grow, right? So I think uh, that's some um, difference in pronunciation. Not that, not that kind of uh, important. I think it just um, um, made use of this kind of uh, you know, words more than uh, two times or three times. We find that's very easy. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's come to the abbreviations. In a uh, medicine, there's a lot of uh, abbreviations. Uh, I'm sure that you have a know like uh, CT, MRI, OR, a uh, lot of, lot of the abbreviations. Okay. Um, I will like uh, make it smaller. Okay, here, yeah. Um, the table one, silent letters and on your, your pronunciation, you can see, um, and how can you to uh, attach an importance to the letter as well as its corresponding pronunciation. CH means K and a chemical, I have put it into chemistry. DYS, read DIS, or uh, dis dystrophy, uh, here dystrophy. Uh, actually, this means not good. Uh, Trophy, uh, all trophy, STL trophy means some kind of uh, nutrition or nourishment. So here, dystrophy means lack of uh, 
uh, nutrition or poor nourishment of tissue, right? Poor nourishment of a tissue. Uh, with that uh, adequate uh, supply of oxygen, blood, nutrition, as we know, the blood can bring uh, in the oxygen and bring out carbon dioxide, right? So with that uh, adequate supply of uh, the blood, I certainly the tissue will be uh, in dystrophy, right? In lack of poor uh, or lack of poor the nourishment. And here, EU, uh, ready you, uh, euphoria, uh, euphoria. You, EU means good. So, as we know that EU, uh, if in the capital letter, later means European Union, right? EU, European Union. Uh, but here, EU means good. You just remember good, okay? Uh, euphoria. Uh, you can see the definition of the example euphoria means exaggerated feeling of well-being. Exaggerated means, um, in English means you can see something in a, in a larger sense, uh, but actually it is a ordinary or even small sense, but you just uh, exaggerated and uh, speaking in a larger sense of way, intentionally, I think. So exaggerated feeling of well-being, for example, you feel happy and actually you're not that kind of happy, but uh, you feel you're very happy and extremely happy, tremendous happy. And I think you're, you're exaggerating your feeling of well-being or this kind of uh, feeling is called euphoria. Euphoria, okay. Generally euphoria uh, in medicine is not uh, that kind of good words because a person or addictive drug, heroin, uh, addictive person, and then they will prefer the kind of sense called euphoria uh, by uh, again and again uh, to purchase the kind of drugs because they have been addicted. Uh, this kind of uh, euphoria, uh, feeling exaggerated feeling of well being, will you know, push them buy again and again this kind of drugs and until they can be bankrupt, right? <clears throat> so next to talk about a GN, uh, rate pronunciation N, uh, here G-N-A-T-H-I-C, uh, nathic. So G-N-A-T-H-I-C, nathic. Here, this word, uh, not, not that kind of uh, often we uh, can come across this kind of words. But if you are a student, if you will be a student in a school of uh, dentistry, uh, this kind of words were very basic. So nathic means uh, pertaining to the jaw. Uh, we have the upper jaw, lower jaw, right? Uh, if you just move your uh, move up and side down uh, your mouth, and then lower jaw, we call it a mandible. Mandible is a lower jaw, can move your mouth up and down. Uh, this is jaw is called mandible, M-A-D-D-I-B-L, mandible. But this, uh, if you just touch your face, and mm, that's the upper part of our mouth, it's called maxilla. Maxilla uh, cannot move, the upper jaw, maxilla cannot move. But actually the shape of uh, maxilla can pose uh, a form, the shape of our face, right? Okay, uh, that's part of, uh, you know, orthopedics or uh, plastic surgery. Uh, some girl want to make their nose, make some their, their uh, you know, macular. Uh, they have some kind of surgery, okay. They want to be a uh, beauty, right? Be beautiful, okay. Anyway, so this color nathic means pertaining to the jaw. And next, the pH. Uh, radio. So here, pharmacy, right? Pharmacy. What is pharmacy? Pharmacy means a drug dispensary or drug store, right? A drug store. If you are in a student in pharmacology, after graduating from your you know university, you can be a, a pharmacist in a hospital, in some clinic, or 
if you have money, you can run your own drug store, a uh, drug uh, a pharmacy, a drug dispensary, right? Uh, yeah, you would be rich. <laughs> okay. A uh, pharmacy. Okay, next the PN, um, red N, uh, like uh, here, pneumonia. Yeah, this word pneumonia. P is voiceless. Uh, cannot uh, P here, no sound. So pneumonia is means an inflammation of the lung, right? Yeah, pneumonia means inflammation of the lung. And then we uh, remember clearly, we talk about uh, uh, the uh, C, like uh, uh, pneumonia or pulmonary, right? Pulmonary uh, disease, P-U-L-M-O, uh, N-A-R-Y, pulmonary, also means lung, right? So pneumonia, it's uh, means inflammation of the lung, or pulmonary disease also means disease about lung, right? Okay, so remember pulmonary, P-U-L-M-O-N-A-R-Y, pulmonary, or pneumonia, P-N-E-U-M-O, pneumo, also means uh, lung, okay. Uh, I just remember that the word with uh, the end IA, okay, refers to some disease uh, like uh, anorexia, uh, A N O R E X I A, anorexia uh, means some um, a person can uh, not eat too much according to his or her body needs because the person needs some fitness, some body, uh, the good good body shape, right? So I think, uh, yeah, even though some person think anorexia is not good, but um, if you just uh, keep uh, uh, on diet or not eat uh, adequately, and then in the end, you will uh, develop uh, some kind of anorexia. So you can see axia, anorexia with the end of IA, as the you know IA, so IA generally in the medicine field refers to some disease. So pneumonia means a kind of disease, inflammation of the lung, right? Uh, here next to PS, uh, read S, P S E O D O, sodo. Okay, sodo, P is voiceless. Voiceless. Sodo means force. Not true, right? I'm sure that you have uh, heard that like pseudoscience. Science is good, but pseudoscience is not good. So it's because it is false, it is wrong, fake. It's counterfeit, not true. So pseudoscience, uh, false science. Uh, I, I want to say that pseudo is very, uh, you know, highly frequent um, words in in the uh, science field, not just in uh, medicine. Okay. Next, uh, PT, uh, rated T, T, uh, ptosis. Uh, here, T P T O S I S, ptosis. Uh, here you can see ptosis means dropping. Um, like uh, for example, your eye. Uh, some I, I think that we have made some person their upper lead just draw down uh, and then I think that's kind of person uh, uh, want to you know, perform their eyes function in a, right away but they cannot because uh, there's some uh, the nerve uh, connecting to the to the eyes uh, connecting the eyes to their to our brain uh, there's something, the function is not that kind of good. So the lead ptosis, the dropping of the lead. So ptosis here means dropping, okay? Ptosis means dropping, okay? So RH, read R, uh, see that rheumatic. RH, H is voiceless, and the rheumatic, okay? Rheumatic, pertaining to rheumatism, a disorder of muscles and joints. 
uh, I think that you have heard some diseases uh, like called a rheumatic fever. Uh, actually, this is not just uh, about the muscle and the joints, it is about our heart. But this kind of uh, like a rheumatic fever will have clinical mass manifestation of our muscles and joints. Rheumatic fever will have some kind of uh, um, symptoms of our palm, okay? Even though that the, uh, you know, etiology or the actual cause of uh, rheumatic fever is about our heart, because that's a heart got some kind of, uh, you know, uh, bacteria inflammation, such as uh, Staphylococcus pneumonia, uh, no, no, Staphylococcus aureus, or uh, um, uh, or like uh, um, Streptococcus or Staphylococcus pneumonia. Okay, Streptococcus pneumonia or Strepto Staphylococcus aureus. I think that's kind of a, a name of the bacteria. Uh, a little bit, you know, complicated. Don't worry. Uh, we will, you know, solve them. We, I think, will help you to remember this kind of uh, name of the bacteria in an easier way. I just now, you just listen, follow me, no problem. But here, rheumatic, uh, it's kind of rheumatic fever, rheumatic containing rheumatism. Uh, sometimes we can see the a doctor in a dermatology or the skin doctor or like an uh, endocrine uh, department doctor should be very familiar with uh, diseases, uh, rheumatic fever, rheumatism, a disorder of a muscle and a joint. Okay. So last but not least, I would like to talk about her X. Here X read Z, uh, like uh, X-I-P-H-O-I-D, Z-foid, Z -foid. Z -foid. Z foid Here means pertaining to cartilage attached to the sternum. Uh, if you have touched your uh, your uh, chest, and then um, if you just uh, you know for follow your hand to the end of your chest, you can find, until you can uh, reach your belly or uh, stomach or uh, abdomen, because the abdomen is very soft, right? And then before you uh, reaching your hand reaching to the uh, soft abdomen, it will, will touch the end of the sternum, and then the end of the sternum you know, actually is kind of a cartilage. So this is called uh, this kind of a cartilage on the end of the sternum is called a zephoid. Zephoid in Chinese, jian tu. Okay, zephoid. Anyway, so I think uh, this uh, table, one to one, silent data and uh, on your, your pronunciations, I suggest you to, uh, you know, remember some of them, uh, even though you cannot remember uh, some of them, don't worry. I maybe have some kind of a, a screenshot for you uh, for a better memory. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh they're they're really important. They're important. Um, again, I would say that don't worry. I just uh, keep learning, uh, and and keep your passion, your you know perseverance, never give up. And this kind of medical t medical terminology will be uh, someday be a, a piece of cake, right? <laughs> okay. Anyway. So I think uh, almost one hour has passed. We would like uh, uh, you know, say goodbye to you. If you have any question, feel free not to ask right now. I'm waiting for you. If you have any question, just uh, you know, ask right now, okay? But I would, I would, I would point it out, but please don't keep silent. Uh, you just keep silent joining our, uh, you know, online class, but I don't know who you are because I'm the teacher. I have the right to know who you are. You as a listener or you just want to be my student. Uh, please tell me who you are. 
uh, I think uh, it's kind of a politeness, right? And if you just keep silent, I, I think that next time I will not uh, permit you to join me because um, you, you got to respect uh, what I'm, my work, right? Okay. So don't feel shy. And if you have any questions, and first let me know who you are and then tell me what kind, do you have any questions? And then I will try my best to give you an answer. Okay. Anyway, if you don't have any questions, I think uh, today we have come to the end of our today's one hour online uh, class uh, about the medical terminology. So we will uh, meet next uh, uh, Thursday evening. Um, so like uh, this, this kind of class will be uh, once a week. Okay, once a week. And I hope you can join us next uh, Thursday. And uh, if you uh, want to this kind of PDF form uh, text uh, in a textbook, please uh, let me know. I will send you by email, via WeChat, or any other kind of form uh, in the communication channel. Okay, so thank you for joining me. God bless you. Bye bye.